Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It On. That's my favorite part of any RPG, leveling up. Followed closely by loot, but looting doesn't give me the same satisfaction as watching my build come into its own as I progress through a game. Which is also one of the reasons why I can't use build guides, because it's no longer my build, I'm using somebody else's. And it, uh, to me it devalues the, the experience, but I also have a more romanticized view of games than I think most people do. Anyway, a level 11 gendarme gets a feat and mighty charge. At 11th level, a cavalier learns to make devastating charge attacks while mounted. Double the threat range of any weapons wielded during a charge while mounted. This increase does not stack with other effects that increase the threat range of the weapon. In addition, the cavalier can make a free bull rush and trip combat maneuver if his charge attack is successful. These free combat maneuvers do not provoke an attack of opportunity. A mobility and persuasion. Now I split between Dreadful Carnage and Shattered Defenses. I think Shattered Defenses is the way to go since we can only attack one enemy at a time anyway. If all my other companions had Shattered Defenses, uh, Dreadful Carnage would definitely be the way to go. Let me go back and read this. So your skill with your chosen weapon leaves opponents unable to defend themselves if you strike them when their defenses are already compromised. So any shaken, frightened, or panicked opponent hit by you this round is flat-footed to your attacks until the end of your next turn. This includes any additional attacks you make this round. So we charge in, we proc our power attack off our charge attack, which procs our corner against smash, which then procs our shatter defenses. And Sila, she gets a feat, Mark of Justice, finally, and Divine Weapon Bond 3. Mark of Justice. At 11th level, a paladin can expend two uses of her smite evil ability to grant the ability to smite evil to all allies for one minute, by using her bonuses. As a swift action, the paladin chooses one target within sight to smite. If this target is evil, the paladin's allies add her charisma bonus, if any, to their attack rolls and add her paladin level to all damage rolls made against the target of her smite. A smite evil attacks automatically bypass any DR the creature might possess. In addition, while smite evil is in effect, the Paladin's allies gain a deflection bonus equal to a charisma bonus, if any, to their armor class against attacks made by the target of this smite. If the Paladin targets a creature that is not evil, the smite is wasted with no effect. This is one of the reasons I was also tempted to, well, not Mark of Justice, but uh, smite evil in general. I was tempted to multi-class my Cavalier into a Paladin. Because then you get challenge, you get smite evil, and then on the Azada path you also get the challenge evil spell. That's a lot of bonuses against a single target. Uh, trickery, knowledge world, and perception. And then for her, I'm going to get missile shield. So you must be using a shield to use this feat. Once per round, when you would normally be hit with an attack from a ranged weapon, not including spell effects, natural attacks, or massive ranged weapons. Uh, weapons. You may deflect it so that you take no damage, as if you had to deflect arrow's feet. You must be aware of the attack and not flat-footed. Alright, so Seal gets a feat. Or religion, perception, and persuasion. I don't know if I want to get combat casting or warrior priest for him. Then we get combat casting. If you're adept at spell casting when threatened or distracted, you gain a plus four bonus on concentration checks made to cast a spell or use a spell like ability. And land just gets a feat. Athletics, mobility, and perception. And we'll get him blind fight as well. We've read this, I think, a couple times before, so I'm not going to again. I think this is what I want to get him. Yeah. I think that'll work. Alright, Nenio also gets a feat. Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Use Magic Device, and Lore Religion. I also get her combat casting.
I haven't seen this before. Alright, this is interesting. Maybe we'll grab this. So you gain a new spell-like ability, each usable twice per day, from the following list in order. So 1 Vanish, 2 Sleep, 3 Blur, 4 Invisibility, 5 Deep Slumber, 6 Displacement, 7 Confusion, and 8 Dominate Person. So for example, the first time you select this feat, you gain Vanish 2 times per day. The second time you select this oh, you have to keep selecting the feat. Oh, I'm not doing that. Never mind. That's way, way too uh, feat and intensive. Yeah, I think we're going to do this instead. Oh, so select one spell. You cast that spell with greater than normal power. So you select one spell. Treat your caster level as being too higher for all level variable effects of the spell. Every time you gain a level in spell casting class, you can choose a new spell to replace the spell selected with his feet. And that spell becomes your specialized spell. We're going to grab Phantasmal Killer. I really, really like... Instantly killing enemies. Wait, what? I... Alright, and then uh, Phantasmal pu uh, Putrefication. And... Heroism Greater. Sounds good to me. Then Arushale gets a feat, and Quarry. A character can, as a standard action, denote one target within his line of sight as his quarry. He receives a plus two insight bonus on attack rolls made against his quarry, and all critical threats are automatically confirmed. A character can have no more than one quarry at a time. This is infinite cast as well. You can just pop it every time you want to change targets. Mobility, Trickery, Stealth, Knowledge Arcana, Perception, and Persuasion. And I think we'll just grab Weapon Focus here. And do short bow. Alright, let's go ahead and assign spells before I forget. Could do more aid. Full strength is starting to become a little obsolete. We probably don't need as many restorations, so let's get rid of these. Do something like that instead. Don't skin communal. That's very valuable. And what else? Interesting communal will also be handy. How long does this last? One minute per level. That's good enough. And heal. Heal is a fantastic spell. Get the spell magic greater. That, I think we'll keep what we have right now. I haven't really been using Crate Pit. I need to. <laughs> this one's all slotted up. Uh, there. <laughs> May as well remain consistent, right? And then here, what do we want her to have? Probably this again. It's a really good spell. Alright, we're all set. Let's uh, finish this place off. I'll go ahead. I will help where I can. 
Also, Korean diary and a burned binding. Oh boy. <laughs> the diary's binding is scorched and many pages are missing. Those who remain are covered in dirt and mold. Between the ink lettering that has spread and run and the patches of rot, it is possible to make out certain phrases. A troop brought news from the west. The plains have fallen, the clans have been slaughtered, and the beasts are feasting on the slain warriors. A few survivors were found, but attempts to get them to the fortress failed. Our own warriors fought their way back with difficulty. The outlying fortifications are overrun with the scum. Only reinforcements from the east will have any chance of breaking through this noose that is slowly closing around our neck. All we can do is wait. They attacked from the sky. The tower is still standing, but burnt out. Along with Zonak and the others, there was no time to light the funeral pyres. We scooped up the bodies and tossed them back behind the walls before we were caught by another wave. Rolog's squad were stationed at the deserted post. Most of them have been maimed, but they're not much use on the walls. They vanished into thin air. The smoke makes day and night bleed into one, watching the eastern horizon is getting more and more difficult. The hope of seeing the banners of Mendev has kept the dread of death at bay for some. Without this comfort, yesterday's warriors turn into whimpering curs. The beasts lose their the beasts lose their last grain of fear in the dark. One of the sentries is plucked right off the wall in front of five of his fellows. Half of the left tower is sinking to the opening fracture. We barricaded the doors, but the smoke pouring through the hole took down three of us. He was spitting, guffawing, lambasting the foreign traitors, screaming that the Mendevians weren't coming. You know smashed the lunatic skull in. Our days are numbered. The smoke makes breathing all but impossible. We set out the time between attacks in the cellars, or at least there's some fresh moisture that trickles down the walls. Our sentries are disappearing one after another, suffocating in the smoke or snatched up by the claws of some flying beast. We open the gates in an hour, but those who trace our final days see that the last sons of Sarkoris died standing tall. One more page is glued in among the final sheets. The page is made from finer paper and is emblazoned with an inscription of an ornate lettering. I discovered this journal in the fortress's underground refuge soon after clearing the place of demons. The defenders of the Green Gates met their deaths with honor. We could not save you, but your courage stands as an example to every person who picks up a weapon today in the name of Galarian. I vow that our newly formed crusade, which already proceeds apace uh, through these mutilated lands, will finish with the Sarkorian started, just as I have finished this journal. The banners of the dead will fly under the fly under clear skies once more. Oh, I, I can reinvigorate the land. All right, let's rely on me. Let's see if they come up here first and take care of this trap. I'm gonna reinvigorate the land if we're dead. Call me again if you need to. No reason to pause. Oh yeah, and she doesn't need this anymore. Uh, we can give that to. Prepared. You call? I'm glad I was useful to you. All right, belt of physical perfection plus two. Plus two enhancement bonuses to strength, dexterity, and constitution. Made a rainbow in the in the blood rain. <laughs> so I was kind of hoping it would stop the blood rain from falling, but you know what? That's fine. Something needs to water the plants. As it should be. I know what to do.
Oh wait, Bucephalus needs to level up. I almost forgot. All right, so he gets a feat, athletics and mobility. Uh, what do I want to give him? Die Hard might be worthwhile. So I don't think he can actually use this, right? Because he is the mount. He doesn't have a mount. I'm pretty sure the rider has to have these feats. Yeah, I'm gonna give him die hard. So you're especially hard to kill. When your hit points total when your hit point total is below zero, but you're not killed. You can fight on for one more round as if disabled. At the end of your next turn, unless brought to above zero hit points, you immediately fall unconscious. That'll give my uh, main character another round while mounted as well. The bell, now reunited with its clapper, produces a gentle, melodious ringing. Here. Is there more? Boots of free reign. These boots grant the wear a permanent effect of the freedom of movement spell. Oh, can I equip you with boots? Not. Gosh darn it. I mean, it doesn't matter if he has it because he's dependent on the. on his mount. Then Demon's Terror. Let's see. This plus two speed Radiant Flail grants its wielder a plus four attack bonus on a first attack against a new demon. Alright, that's really good. I like attack that bonuses. Far. Alright, looks like we're done here. So we go back to Dresden. I think I'm going to do Land's Quest next. Oh, that's going to take us back towards Canabras. I need to see if I can build anything in Canabras. If so, I might be able to build a teleporter. Get the backtracking a little easier. I know the way. I don't think I missed anything here. I can't get over here. Can I? No. All right. Let's blow this popsicle stand. We got things to do and people to meet. Oh, please take your time, Socio. Where's Bismuth at? I have him summoned for that entire <laughs> that entire area. Let me go back to Canabras and see if I can build a teleporter. Say before I enter the fray. There's no telling how this will go. What is this thing? 
Energy. Oh. Alright, this is gonna go <laughs> a lot more smoothly than I was expecting. Is that, that was a level 7 army, wasn't it? <laughs> the monsters that opposed the Crusaders were truly abominable. Their bodies manifested weird mutations. Extra eyes, unpaired limbs, mouths in their bellies, and withered half-grown heads, helplessly dangling on their shoulders. But the leader of this a heinous cohort was just a pile of moving flesh, who struggled to retain its humanoid appearance. Even as it died, it continued to stir a monstrous brew in a large rotund cauldron. Shuddering with dis uh, disgust, the Crusaders peered inside the cauldron and managed to retrieve some of its hideous contents. Uh, chunks of bodies belonging to demons, mortals, and other unknown creatures, twitched convulsively, still alive. Uh, the soldiers did not know what to do with this vile trophy and delivered it to the commander. Well, thank you guys. It's a voracious jumble. The mage Zymus was a famous adventurer and wicked fighter. His feats, now seldom recalled, were as countless as his scars. Zymus was not driven by thirst or for fame, but by a rare sense of responsibility inherent to his nature. Therefore, the day when the brave mage lost his arm in a fight with a werewolf became his tragedy. How could he, so strong and solid, retire now, when so many still needed his help? Without a second thought, Zymus took an arm from a fallen enemy to replace his own. Thus his decline began. For years, again and again, Zymus took the limbs of defeated enemies to heal his wounds. Zymus turned from a hero into a monster. It was rumored that there was no actual flesh left of the body he had been born with. At first, Zymus was shunned, then driven away, and finally declared a monster. The mage fled into the wasteland to become an ominous, ominous, did I say ominous? Ominous, a legend people scare their children with. Let's go sell our stuff first, and then we'll go to the Citadel, do some talking, and then prepare to head to go do Land's Quest, which is two days in the opposite direction of where I need to be going for Greybor's Quest, which doesn't have a timer beside it. I don't know if it's actually on a timer or not, but he said, don't mess with, yeah, don't waste my time, or he'll leave. Like, if we look at his quests here. Yeah, the Dragon Hunt doesn't have a timer on it. It's about that time for me to find a new spear, I think. Captain Odin. The tall gaunt half-elf salutes you solemnly. Commander, it is an honor to call this first meeting of the Military Council to order. I'm Captain Odin, and I have been serving under your command ever since the assault on the Great Garrison. I'll do my best to be as of much use to you as possible in this role. The foundation of the military is cold calculation and discipline. These are the principles I will seek to impart on the Crusaders. If we are to win this war, we must forget about mercy, for our enemies, for our troops, and for ourselves. Is Regil on every single council? 
Well, Commander, your sister Sila is no renowned general, but she spent half her life tussling with evil. Looks like I'll be stepping up on behalf of all of Iomide's faithful here. I hope my advice will prove useful. The first issue on the Military Council's agenda is the reorganization of troops. Our infantry has been, held, has been bled dry. The forces Her Majesty granted to us were enough to take Dresden. We need more troops to hold it. Furthermore, the army was assembled in great haste after the assault on Canabras. It was never adequately equipped. Unfortunately, we don't have much time for redeployment. Our scouts report that a powerful Baylor, a Kremzida, is already preparing a retaliatory strike on Dresden. But we can rely on freshly conscripted Mandavian soldiers. They may not have the skill, but our strength, as always, lies in the number and the fervor of the volunteers joining the Crusades. We can't throw everyone into the meat grinder. We'll just get our youths killed for nothing. We need to select the best among the recruits, or even better, hold a contest. The bravest and most capable will join the Crusaders. Now, the death count is always highest in the infantry. Its purpose is to serve as a shield. It would be wise to invest our resources in hiring and training heavy footmen with shields to ensure maximum protection, even if it limits their mobility and makes them less threatening to the enemy. Now, Captain Odin, what does the Military Council do? The Military Council determines the strategy for our troops enacts army reforms, approves new equipment standards, and makes decisions on all issues regarding military action on the front lines. Who is this Baylor Karemzida? The most trusted servant of the Demon Lord Discari. Among the historians of the Mendevian Crusades, he is known as the strategist of the World Wound. He is not as renowned as Monago, the conqueror of Dresden, or Hepzimira, daughter of Baphomet, but he has claimed the most major victories over the forces of Mendev. He's a general, and quite possibly one of the best tacticians in the entire abyss. I've been studying his style of warfare for years. He may seem like an ordinary demon, another typical war uh, taskmaster, but that's a fallacy. Like a beast following a scent, he senses weaknesses in his enemy's defenses and strikes at them, sending soldiers to bring targeted carnage. His uncanny charisma attracts more and more soldiers to him, so he's never short on troops and sacrifices, and sacrifices them like pawns, whenever he pleases in order to achieve his victories. Ramzida is the face of the demon host. For many years, I've been gathering research on him, preparing for the day our armies would clash with his once more. I hope my council will help you defeat him, but so far, Ramzida has known no defeats. I have a question for my advisors. I'm ready to answer any questions you may have, Commander. Sila, have you ever commanded an army before? Not on a scale like this, of course not. But I fought evil, and I know its tricks. Besides, war makes people callous, and it's always useful to have a paladin advisor around to remind you at crucial moment what we're actually fighting for, right? Of Regil, why do you wish to sit on the military council? I have command experience, and I intend to impart to the Crusaders at least a modicum of the discipline and rigidity of the Hell Knights. The quality of the Mendevian staff currently available to you leaves much to be desired. Retro glances at the wincing Captain Odin. That much is certain. Who are you, Captain Odin? Captain Odin ba uh, bows ceremoniously. I've served on the front lines of the Mendevian army for over 25 years, and in that time, I've gained a wealth for combat experience. Of, not for. His voice sounds calm, but his face darkens at the mention of a wealth of combat experience. I'm considered one of the foremost experts on tactics and strategy in Queen Galfrey's officer corps. I spent my whole life studying the craft of warfare, not familiar with the thoughts of all prominent military leaders of the last five centuries. Furthermore, I wholeheartedly believe in the traditions of Mendev's military art. I will gladly share my knowledge with you, Commander. Alright, I have no more questions. We're glad to be of service, Commander. I want to hear the opinions of my advisors. Everyone looks at you expectantly. Sila, do we really need only the bravest and most capable for our infantry? I mean, we can't send untrained rookies to a slaughter. We have the right to command only those who are ready for battle, those who can def defeat the enemy. We must find out who has the skill and the guts. Contests are perfect for that, and a low excitement for our warriors couldn't hurt either. We won't get that many winners, but their strength will come from their prowess, not their numbers. Your proposal would leave us with an infantry full of selfish risk takers dreaming of glory and valor. That is bad material for a soldier. The infantry's role is to be a shield for the archers and mages. All they're required to do is follow orders and hold the line, unto victory or death. Ambitious loners cherry-pick through contests of skill, or not 
uh, fit to perform this duty. A uh, Regil, why do you insist on shield bearers? The infantry is the is a meat shield intended to catch the blade of the opposing army in its flesh. This shield must be reliable. That is all that is required of it. That is why I would like to see a well armored shield bearers as our foot soldiers. We must have the option of pitting ranks of footmen against a tide of rampaging demons, knowing with certainty that they will not scatter or die until they, until they have completed their task. Captain Odin, you just want to gather up some recruits from Mendev. Yes, institute a draft and try to amass as many new soldiers from Mendev and other lands as we can. We've always drawn our strength from our zeal and our determination to oppose evil. If we start holding contests or selections, we'll turn a holy crusade into a job for the chosen few and scare away future volunteers. If we try changing our tried and true tactics, we'll lose valuable time. Our army is in need of fresh blood right now. All right, everything is clear to me now. Your advisor, your advisor is not respectfully in response to your words. That is a significant damage bonus. So champions are the ones we currently have in our army, anyway. I'm not... No. Sorry, Regil. I do not want shield bearers. <laughs> no thank you. Yeah, uh... I'm gonna go with Silas. We'll hold contests and select the most proficient warriors. A cheeky smile blossoms on Silas' face. You know, I think I might hit the arena once or twice myself. To test the rookies. It'll be a nice warm up. You have mythic powers, Sila. <laughs> That's not fair. Captain Odin salutes you formally. Thank you for your time, Commander. When the reforms are finished and the ranks of our infantry are replenished, I'll assemble the military council to discuss new decisions. Collard Crusaders. A Chalaxian lord with an escort of battle slaves wishes to join the crusade, but many crusaders loathe slavery. They're asking the commander to free the thralls and banish the outlander. Yeah, let's reform the slaver. On the commander's orders, the Chalaxian went on a long foray with his fighters. The hardships of this journey made him see his servants in a different light, to see them as mortals just like himself. After that, the commander simply had a talk with the aristocrat. That was enough to fill him with hatred for slavery. He released his soldiers, returned to Cheliax, and became a true friend of the Crusaders. Yeah, and that was obviously the best option. Military Tribunal. Once a traitor, always a traitor. A lawbreaker is a criminal for life. Thus said the commander in the fight for the Lost Chapel, then he ordered military tribunals to be organized within the army. Now that Dresden is free, the commander's advisors finally have the opportunity to carry out this order. There's a skipping action due to negative morale reduces by 5%. Not that we have ever worried about negative morale, but hey. Now it's less of an issue. 5% less of an issue. All right, so where is Odin at? As it should be. Well, we need to rest because I am tired. So we're gonna rest, and then we're gonna hunt down Odin, talk to him, then call it an episode. I never thought about the world around me before. All I thought about was finding my next victim. But I'm starting to notice things, the way the grass moves in the breeze, the way sunlight glints on armor. It is beautiful. See beauty in all the small things. You'd make a fine artist. Would you like me to teach you teach you to paint? We're gonna level up the rest of our companions in the next episode. I did forget about that.
Garenthal the Rock Cleaver. An entire grove seems to be heading your way. A creaking procession of treants and moving trees approaches you, the leaves rustling. Greetings, Lushbringer, a most worthy leader of the Free Crusaders, says the treant whose bark is cracked and gnarled. I am Scarenthal the Rock Cleaver. Like everyone else who has come with me, I am a guardian of the perished woods of Sarkoris. Demons are our sworn enemies. They destroyed or corrupted our forests, and drained or poisoned the rivers that nurtured them. Unable to cope with the loss, many of my brethren have succumbed to insanity. Where spring sap once flowed in their veins, now only fury and madness remains. Those of us who retained our sanity guarded the last remaining pockets of forest in the world wound without hope. But then, one wave of a mortal's hand, the abyss blighted soil was turned into a flowering garden. When we learned of this miracle, we came here to support you and your cause. For the sake of the forest that perished and those who, who will be born on the healed land. The treant pauses and ends his oration on a grand note. I beg of you, a most worthy one, recruit us as free crusaders and allow us to join the ranks of your allies and fight under your banners. Freeze Crusaders? Sure, why not? Don Quixote, should bear in mind that the treants are accompanied by quick woods, carnivorous plants that often hunt humans. Recruiting them would be akin to letting a pack of ravenous wolves loose in your house. He sends a faint note of anger in the rustling and creaking coming from Scarenthal and his fellow creatures. Do not insult us so, stranger. We would have come all this all the way here and extended the branch of friendship and support just to betray our allies' trust. Treants are shepherds of quick woods, and we're sure they do no harm to no one. You don't expect us to abandon them to the demons, do you? They too are living creatures, just like you and every other crusader. But can you really be assured that your charges won't harm anyone? Look, Don Quixote, the best choice for you and those who trust you would be to refuse to accept them as crusaders. Still, if you choose to let them join, make the trance tell you where their groves are located, and promise to burn them down in retaliation for the Quick Woods' wrongdoings, to there be any. Yet threaten our ally for something they have not yet done, and probably never will. Out of the question. I'll, I'll accept Scarenthal and his friends as my allies, without these cruel conditions. The Treants and Quickwoods respond with agitated humming and rustling. For a moment, you feel like you're standing under a dense canopy in the middle of a downpour. Thank you, Lushbringer. By your trust is an honor, we will prove ourselves worthy of it. Now if you'll allow me, we've heard tell of a special ritual you perform over your allies. Unite them as crusaders. We don't understand all the details of these titles and regalia, but we not like to see ourselves going without. We want to be full-fledged members of your company. Genuine enthusiasm rings in the treant's voice. Yeah, sing the song of Elysium. Oh, night you, that you must learn how to play music. Scarenthal makes a halting attempt to creak through the tune. Your customs are quite unusual, but intriguing. Thank you for the honor. We'll head to your court and help our brothers and sisters in whatever way we can. Alright, let's go talk to Odin. So I want to knock that out so we can just leave Dresden in the next episode. Not far. Oh sweet, we got Treants. I'm assuming we actually got Treants' units. And if all my footmen upgraded to champions, that means I have an extra slot in my main army for somebody. And Treants might just be that somebody. I'll go ahead. Captain Odin gives you a polite nod. What can I do for you, Commander? A captain, what's your role in my army? I'm responsible for drills, organizing exercises, and briefing the officers on the strategies you, you approve. Furthermore, I have the honor of serving as the chair of your military council. Remind me about the responsibilities of the military council. The military council determines the strategy for our troops, enacts army reforms, one of these plants here. Uh, approves new equipment standards and makes decisions on all issues regarding military action on the front lines. 
You've had encounters with Quarim Zida before, haven't you? Only in the halls of my mind. Back when I was a young lieutenant, dreaming of the title of Crusade Commander. And who among us hasn't dreamed of being on your shoes, Commander? At least for a little while. I know I would one day meet him on the battlefield. I'm sure there are more powerful demons in the world wound, but in this war, where entire armies fight for victory rather than individual warriors, he is Mendev's greatest enemy. I'd studied countless reports on battles against him, put out countless of his historic battles in my head, trying to spot his mistakes. I did spot a few, so I hoped, but I never had the chance to put it to the test. I moved up in rank, knowing that the day when we would come face to face was drawing ever closer. The most important day of my life, I could feel that it was very close. Tell me about your military career. My family has lived in Mendev for generations, simple but prosperous folk. Even as a child, I was interested in the study of warfare, and I always knew I'd end up joining the ranks of professional soldiers. After serving for three years as a cadet in the capital, I went to Last Wall, where I graduated from the Crusader War College with honors. Then, I returned to Mendev. For 25 years, I fought many battles as part of various border units. As a result of my service, I was distinguished by command with a promotion to the rank of captain and a subsequent transfer to headquarters. Captain Odin falters as expression darkens. He remains silent for a while, then shakes his head and continues. Now that I didn't have to do drills, I had the time to focus on studying tactics and strategy. My fellow officers called my desk the archive, as it was always covered with manuscripts and military treatise treatises. Treatises. Yeah. Alas, I never did become a commander, even though it was my childhood dream but I was able to become a competent enough officer to be serving directly under your authority. Hope you'll find my knowledge useful. I get the feeling you've had your share of pain on the front lines. Captain Odin presses his lips together. No more than the soldiers from my squad. My last battle was at Billereth Ford's outpost, north of Canabras. The demons, they brought flames down upon us. I'd never seen anything like it. Walls of fire spewing out fireballs. 300 soldiers turned into screaming, burning meat. And believe it or not, in the light of that cursed flame, the battlefield was dark as a cave. The smoke was so thick, you couldn't see any further away than your own hand. We held that day, but the price was high. I paid mine as well. It took a miracle for the clerics to pull me out of my melted armor. And it took me four years before I could remain calm near fire. Any fire. Even candlelight. I thought they'd write me off as a psychologically as psychologically broken, but instead, I was promoted. Apparently, in that inferno, we managed to deflect a terrible blow and protect Canabras from the attack of a superior force. Apparently we were heroes, as unyielding as rock. I didn't know that at the time. We were just fighting, burning and fighting. Alright, I have to go. I'm always at your service, Commander. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. Off camera, I'll probably look through the merchant's inventories one more time. We have some money to spend. And then... We'll level up all of our companions in the next episode and start our journey towards uh, Canabras for Land's companion quest. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.